All right, boys, today we're going to be looking at everything that happened on day one of the VGC 2023 Pokemon World Championships. And I thought there was no better place to start than here with the top 12 most picked Pokemon. Now, obviously, not all the stats are out for these um, for, for the event, so I don't know exactly how many Pokemon were played on day one um, and what their percentages were, but we do know what the top 12 were. And look, to no one's surprise, Fluttermane sits at the very top and honestly, a little bit to my surprise at 72%, very, very dominant. You know, I said coming into this, this is the best Pokemon in the format. Seeing it at 72% clearly just shows that. Um, second most I uh, used Mon though was quite surprising to me, and that is Iron Hands. Now, I'm a huge fan of Iron Hands. I've been saying for a while, I think this Mon was really good. But to see it take over Urshifu Rapid Strike as the, you know, number two Mon on the format was kind of crazy. Um, but look, I think it has a great matchup into the meta. Um, it's just fantastic. You know, it's one of the few physical attackers that like always one-shots Fluttermane with Heavy Slam, uh, which is really cool. Obviously, it kind of forces Fluttermane to tear water. Um, just a great all-round Mon though. It's got great pivoting. It's got fake-out support, which is unbelievably good. It has fantastic stabs in, you know, Wild Charge, Thunder Punch, Drain Punch, and Close Combat. Um, but yeah, just a fantastic Mon. Really good to see it up there at the other top of the usage. And then we got Urshifu Rapid. Um, everyone knows what this Mon does. It just clicks Surging Strikes and it wins games. Taunty, um, sorry, Torn Eye. It, one of the best, you know, sorry, the best Tailwind set that we have in the game right now. Just fantastic support. Um, really, really good for speed control. It has Taunt, you know, Icy Wind, Bleak Wind Storm. You can set Manual Weather as well. Um, but yeah, fantastic Mon. Then we see Shroom all the way down there at 30%. Um, honestly, I'm kind of surprised Shroom wasn't used more than Tornadus. Uh, but obviously, you know, best redirection Mon we have in the game. Not surprised here. Uh, Chen Pao, uh, obviously, you know, just a fantastic Mon to pair up. Fantastic Mon, sorry, to pair up with all the physical attackers. You know, fantastic next to Urshi, fantastic next to um, Iron Hands. Really good with, you know, Lando, Rilla, Ursaluna. Like, just great with all of them, right? Anything that hits hard on the physical end loves this Mon. Uh, basically, just, you know, sort of ruin is OP. Uh, fantastic stab moves, um, just great priority as well. Honestly, great Mon. Um, I'm also surprised this is kind of as low as it is. I definitely thought this would probably be pushing top three. Um, it's not even top five, which is kind of crazy, but obviously just outside of it. Uh, Lenderous, best Intimidate Mon we have. It's been, you know, the GOAT for over a decade now. Not much to say. Uh, Heatran taking the spot as the number one fire type. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think, you know, Chiyu might take it towards the end here. Um, but Heatran, you know, best Steel type we have right now. Best fire type we have right now. Just great Mon. Um, the fire immunity is fantastic. Uh, Grass Terror makes this thing really good. And there's a lot of different sets. You know, the subsets are really cool. Um, the offensive life orb sets, the AV sets. I mean, this one does a lot. It's fantastic into Fluttermane. Um, really great Mon. Rillaboom, uh, again, look, another great fake out Mon. This is probably the second best fake out Mon we have. Um, grassy uh, Terrain is fantastic. You know, uh, Woodhammer, I, I, again, another... It, it's crazy because Iron Hands is another, like, obviously support Mon with fake out that can threaten the one shot on Fluttermane. Uh, and so can Rillaboom, you know, Terrain plus Woodhammer does really threaten out the Fluttermanes, which is really cool. Chiyu, my guy, my goat. Um, great to see it here in the top 10. You know, I, I wasn't sure if Chiyu would actually quite make the top 10. I personally do think coming into the event, it was better than Heatran. Um, but yeah, it's good to see it here at 24%. Absolutely love it. Uh, next up, Golden Joe. Um, I look, this one, I feel like every time a format develops, Golden Joe just becomes good. It doesn't matter like how little play it gets at the start of a format. Golden Joe always comes back in. Fantastic Steel type, fantastic Ghost type. Uh, best signature move I think we've ever seen to make it rain. Has access to Nasty Plot. Fantastic Mon, honestly, just the, the Mon's fantastic. And then finally, we got Big Ursa Luna. Um, you know, one of the one of the Hisuian Mons. It is the best, obviously, out of all of them. You know, Guts Facade is OP out of this Mon. It's unbelievably strong under Trick Room. It is the best Trick Room sweep we have. Um, yeah, but guys, that, that's the top 12 Mons for the um, for the UCG, for day one at least, day one. Um, day two will be a bit different, obviously. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about this. If there's anything here as well that you're kind of surprised about. Like, obviously, I, I knew Flutterman was going to be number one, but 72%, kind of nutty. Um... But yeah, there's that, guys. We'll, we'll jump into the games now. We'll, we won't go too far, like, too much into these games. I do want to review some of the, the bigger ones later, like a Wolf's game in particular, I'll probably do. Um, but we'll just go a brief overview of the teams. We'll have a look at what people were using and then just kind of discuss how how the uh, the series went. All right, so unfortunately, look, we don't have sound here, so we'll just kind of let the, the game go. I, I don't want to get copyrighted here, but basically, round one, we have Arash Mardi versus Nato. Now, ooh, all right. I've choked that, boys. We'll just, we've got to leave it there. We're going to pause it. I'm not going to let it run just yet. Uh, let's have a look at the teams, right? So the really interesting thing here for game one, obviously two former world champions, which is, you know, fantastic to see. Um, obviously, it's going to be a high level game, but their teams were almost identical with the only differences being Qian Pao and Qi Yu, obviously two ruined mons, right? So really, really similar teams, very, you know, very good balance, you know, like bulky balanced teams. Um, both teams had Flutter, both teams had Urshi Rapid, I believe it was, Iron Hands, uh, Landorus, Amoongus, just a very, very, you know, standard balanced team. So... Look, great to see, um, you know, I, I love these teams personally, so 
you know, it, it could, you know, come across as kind of maybe a little, you know, standard, but I still do think these teams are really fun. And look, it was a really, really good set where Arash really was just like able to dominate. And it, he kind of showed right that like Chen Pao is just like really, really good, right? I'll, I'll see if I can like show any key parts from the game. Unfortunately, it's a nine hour stream we're looking at here. Um, so it's going to be really tough. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go into it too far. I don't, unfortunately, I don't really want to like run any of the videos just yet. Um, cause like, yeah, I, I don't know what I can and can't really do, I guess. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble in copyright struck, but yeah, we got a rush mighty there. He wins game one. Um, how did he end this? Yeah, that's right. It was, a, it, it was the yeah, pretty, pretty strong end game by him here. Um, but yeah, honestly, a rush ended up just like, he, he pretty easily wins this series 2-0, right? If you want to go see it, like, so if you want to, I guess, see yourself, obviously go watch it. I'll, I'll leave a link to the stream down below guys. If you haven't seen the sets, obviously go watch them. Like every set from the world is honestly fantastic. Um, I, I do wish I could kind of show more, uh, but yeah, this is kind of the end game here. Uh, just ice crash. That's another big thing too. If you have a look at the set here, ice crash and crunch, very, very surprising on the champ powers. A lot of people, you know, obviously talking about like running sacred sword, um, ice bit of ice crash is another big, uh, big, I guess, question, especially when it comes to champ power, right? Do you want, you know, the, do you want the guaranteed move that can hit the, the Rocky helmets? Or do you want the, the move that has a flinch chance, but can also miss? It's also slightly more power, right? A lot of, you know, um, a lot of mains and Rillabooms right now are kind of like teching to live the Ice Spinner. Ice Super Crash is a bit more difficult to live. Um, and the Flinch Chance is definitely, you know, they, they can come in pretty clutch. Actually, I'll, I'll touch on this here too. This is actually a really cool end game here. So uh, this end game is actually a uh, a Safety Goggles um, Urshifu, right? Versus a Rocky Helmet uh, Amoongus, right? So what Amoongus ideally wants to do here is just just aim down the right. The, sorry, the champ out here. Aim down the left slot. Get that out the way. Urshifu is going to kill itself on the helmet eventually. But what he actually does here, which is like really, really cool, is he just, just keeps spamming Swords Dance. That's basically how this game ends, right? He just keeps clicking Swords Dance. And then eventually a, yeah, a crunch into a plus five Aqua Jet, I think is what ends up taking him out here. So I think we see, yeah, he goes for another Swords Dance. That puts him at plus five. He sleeps the right slot. But at this point, he's just in range of the, uh, the plus five Aqua Jet, which I did think was a really cool end game here. Um, and it was really good to see as well. No CC on the, um, the Urshi for uh, like the first game of the series. Uh, you know, protect, double water stab, plus Swords Dance. So really cool. But yeah, plus five picking it up there. Really cool set there by Arash. Um, he played really well. Really interesting sets as well. Um, so yeah, really cool to see. All right, and so game two was against Ashton Cox and Yuta Tada. Uh, Yuya Tada, sorry. I, I apologize. I'm awful when it comes to Japanese names. So this set was a really, really cool one. So I absolutely loved Ashton Cox's team here. This is a team that like, I look at it. It's got like, it's kind of got my style written all over it, right? You've got this like, this really good, you know, speed control, hyper offensive team here with the Tornadoes plus the Flutterfish. But then you also have like this, you know, this like trick room, like it's kind of like a Sunroom team, right? Because like obviously the Torkoal is really good at buffing up the, you know, the Flutter main and the uh, Chiyu as well. But it also works under Trick Room with Cresselia and Iron Hands. Like Iron Hands, Cresselia is a fantastic lead, Fake Out plus Trick Room. And then you got things like, you know, uh, a Torkoal in the back with, you know, Terrifier Eruption, which is like fantastic. So a really, really cool team here by Ashton Cox. One of my favorite that we saw from day one. Um, and then look, I believe this is the exact same team we just saw um, Arash win with in round one. If you have a look at it, again, a very, very standard team for this event. Um, but let's just jump into the game a bit because it was really cool. I believe off memory, I think Ashton ends up going on to win this one 2-0. Oh. Um, but I really don't know how much of this I can show. So actually, yeah, sorry. He wins this 2-1. Uh, so, oh, no. Ashton loses this one 1-2. One, he wins game one, which was like really, really cool. So you see here, he goes into the, the talk to set up the sun here. Um, and then Flutterbane speed booster here, like make sure it's the fastest thing on the board. And then this was like really, really cool. He, he like reads the fact that like, hey, in the sun, if he wants to kill Flutterbane, he has to double Flutterbane, which is going to give him a free eruption. Now, I do believe he ends up going like Terra Water here, I think, which allows him to live and he protects. Oh, sorry, he detects. That, did he double protect here? Is that what I think actually is? I think he double protects, right? Or no, he just gives him GM power for chip damage. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, it, it, it's been a while since I watched this, but yeah, he gets that. He misses this. So this was actually really crucial as well, because I think had he hit this, he may not have killed, but he at least would have put it in range of Aqua Jet, basically meaning like Flutterman never plays this game. Um, but yeah, Ashton Cox does eventually go on to win game one here. Um, I'll keep like skipping forward, see if there's any interesting things we can look at here. Not really. Ah, it, it's hard. I kind of want to go over these games, but like I also don't want like, you know, big Pikachu coming down on me. So maybe we'll sit here. Ashton Cox wins game two. Um, and then from there, he kind of just gets outplayed a bit. Um, I believe game two was pretty handily in Yuta's favor. Is that the end of game two or game three? So this is the end of game three here. So yeah, this, this end game, actually, you know, let's have a look at the end game here. The end game for this one was actually really cool. So it was like really close. So he had Ice Beam Cresselia into the Landorus, right? 
Um, and he, he was kind of like in this really weird spot here where it's like, all right, so if he takes out the Landorus and Urshi protects, it's like GG. But if he makes the call um, and goes for the kill on the Urshi here, Lando's in a position where it might two shot with U-turn at this stage, right? One turn of Trick Room left I want to add here as well. So the question is, do you call the Protect on either Mon, right? If either Mon protects here, you know, and you make the wrong call, it's, you know, like, it's just GG. So he, he gets the Urshi. Also, really interesting as well, Psy Shock. I'm almost certain Ashton Cox wins this if he had Psy Kick, by the way. Because there was, like, one time where he missed the KO on the Urshi, where it's like, dude, why do you have Psy, uh, Psy Shock over Psy Kick? Uh, but unfortunately, as you do see there, that uh, that U-turn does do 80 damage, meaning the Trick Room ends, and then he dies there. So very, very unfortunate. Very close set. This one was really, really cool. Um... I, again, I loved Ashton Cox's team. I do think he kind of made like some misplays. Um, again, I, I'm not sure why he's size shock over side kick. I'd really, really like to know that. I don't know if that's something to do with like a flutter main calc or something like along those lines. Uh, but uh, overall, look, this is a great set. Ashton did play pretty well. Um, just an unfortunate end game there. He was so close to pulling it out. Like he, he was in one of those situations where like he, he kind of needed to, I think, attack the left slot with the ice beam because he, he knew he'd, he'd already seen he could KO the, um, the lander with one shot. Um, so I kind of feel like he had to go for that one shot there and then, you know, just pray that the Urshi did protect. But unfortunately there, he double attacked and it did cost him the game. All right, the third round was between Barash and Yuto. Now, this was one of my absolute favorite teams. When I saw this, you know, I tweeted about it. I said, Barash is my guy. He's my hero. Look at this freaking team, dude. This man rocked up to the world championships, not only with Broloom, but my guy, Roaring Mid, he's also got Basque Legion, Hisuian Arcanine, dude. Like, this is such an interesting team here. Like, th this is so unique compared to what, like, we'd seen from basically, like, everyone else at the event, right? Like, three of those, like, you know, first four teams we saw, very, very standard. This team, not like Broloom. I, I honestly think this is probably the only Broloom at the event. Uh, Roaring Main, I do believe, has been played by a few different players, but, like, I, I don't know how good its results were. Um, obviously, one of my favorite Pokemon, so it's great to see it there. Basque Legion as well. I believe this was a choice scarf Basque Legion, which was like really, really cool. Um, but honestly, just a really, really cool concept. Um, I absolutely love this. Like, it's so unique, and I, I love seeing teams like this. On the other side here, though, is another pretty interesting team. It's kind of like a like a trick room, you know, balance team in a sense, right? Like you've got this Glastrio mode, but then you've got like the Heatran, Rilla, you know, Water Urshi, Flutterman, right? Really, really cool team as well. The Glastrio was like really interesting. I do think this is the only Glastrio we actually saw day one. I might be uh, misremembering, but yeah. This was a pretty interesting set. So, obviously, I think Barash went for the same lead both times, right? I, I believe he led, um, yeah, so he led Moon plus uh, Balloon. Basically, the game plan here was just, like, it's boost to speed, so, like, Tailwind and Spore, right? And that's basically what he does. He goes on to, like, you know, get a pretty good, like, end game uh, in, in, in every game, right? So, he gets the Terra off here again. I kind of want to skip further forward because I don't really care about the early game here. Missing the Heat Wave, uh, not sorry, missing the Heat Wave. Protecting here was also, like, really, really clutch. Um, you know, just allowing him to get his stuff off here. But what I kind of want to talk about is the end game for both these matchups. So basically, oh God, did we... I've skipped too far ahead. Sorry, guys. It's, it's hard. I probably should have had a better way to do this. So that, that last year is what we're looking for here. The reason we're looking for this is, okay, so you see this end game here, right? You would think like Golden Go. Now, I do believe Trick Room is also up here. So you would be like looking at an end game like this where you're like, damn, Cresselia plus Glastria, like there's no way you lose this like on that team, right? The issue here is Glastria's only offensive moves were the Icicle Crash and Body Press, which Golden Go is immune to and heavily resists. So unfortunately here, you see the Icicle Crash comes out there. It did a whole lot of nothing. Wait, was it the Icicle Crash? No, it was Icy Wind. Sorry, that was the Icy Wind that came out. My bad. Shadow Ball comes out. I believe he was plus two at this point. He one-shots it. And then you just watch this Icicle Crash, dude. So Trick Room had just ended, sorry. But yeah, it did 50 damage. That was a four shot coming out of that. So... Unfortunately, he was in a position where he could never win it. Um, and eventually, you know, he does just go down to a, a, a make it rain there. Which, again, he got pretty close to winning that. But really curious to me here was the fact that he... Like, Yuto never adapted in this series, right? Which was, like, really interesting to me. Like, so, I, I believe this was a 2-0, right? Was it a 2-0? I quickly want to just... Yeah, so Br Brash wins this again. So, he wins this one 2-0. And the end game was, like, the exact same. Like, that's what, like, I, I found... No, sorry, I shouldn't say it was the exact same. Glastria came in this game and eventually got like taken out because I like, couldn't do anything. And like, here's the thing, right? And this is what like kind of annoys me, right? I don't, I shouldn't say it annoys me because like I, I don't really care. But why did Yuto bring Glastria once again, right? There is a Basket Legion Goldango on his opponent's team. You've only got an ice and a fighting type move. You can't use the fighting type move on anything. Sure, it's good. In, like, Glastria is good into Roaring Moon, but I think you had to find a different way through Roaring Moon. 
Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like, maybe I'm going crazy here. But like, that was your Roaring Moon answer. And that mod was just like useless end game. Because like, I, I don't even know why Barash even ends up like targeting it down. Because like, it literally can't hurt these two mons. Um, but yeah, you end up just seeing the, the power coming out. So this is, um, I believe we're in Trick Room at the minute. But you get to just see Basket Legion do Basket Legion things here. Just, bah. Gets that KO. I believe the Trick Room has ended at this point. And then, yeah, just the double up here guarantees him the win. Yeah, Barash, really cool team. I was rooting for him all day. Um, I was really glad to see him make a uh, top cut as well. So that was really, really cool. Sorry, day two. Day two, not top cut. All right, guys. Then we skip ahead to round four here. Um, this was a really, really good performance by Simone. If you guys ever want to see how to like play like a more balanced slash aggressive team into Trick Room, I highly recommend it. He absolutely played this phenomenally. The way he played with his like Urshi and whatnot. Sorry, not his Urshi. His um. Oh, why am I blanking? It's the one at the bottom, Arcanine. The way he used his Azuian Arcanine in this series was fantastic. Um, honestly, this is a great watch. If you're someone who like ever struggles into like the Trick Room matchups, go give this a watch. Like this match, honestly, I feel like needs more of a like a breakdown than just like me going over it. Um, but yeah, he he absolutely like dominated in this like this set. Like, dude, like he's going up against Trick Room and just like completely outplaying him here. Like he just completely outplays him. He gets in the Ursa Luna here. He goes to the Ice Beam there. The Rock Slide comes out, does good damage, picks up the Cresselia here. And then, like, the Flame Orb kicks in, gets in the hands. But then, like, again, he just, like, kind of outplays him, like, the whole way around. Because I think it was in a position where he, like, thought the 9 was, like, just going to leave. And then the 9 just stayed. And then, dude, look at it. Eat the facade, right? Because, like, the thing as well, you got to think about this end game here is he can't ever click um, Earthquake, right? If, if he just, like, clicks Earthquake in this set, like, series, he's in trouble. And I think that was, like, a big issue, especially in game two. Because in game two, he didn't use the Terra Electric, I believe. Um, and you see there too, he like stalls, like how do you stall out the Trick Room and have more KOs than the Trick Room team? Insane, dude. Like, like look at this, right? Like that is his damage versus Trick Room and he's KO'd the Cresselia, dude. And then from there, it was basically just GG. When a Trick Room team doesn't have their Trick Room and the, like the end game looks closed, just everything just starts falling. But game two is where this, like, dude, he just like outplayed him so hard in game two. Cause like you pull this up. Yeah. Like he got rid of the H9 early here, but they traded, right? Like you have a look, H9 goes down there, right? But like, look at the Flutter Main Tail. Look at this, right? The, the D-Knight's like locked into um, something that wasn't E-Speed because like E-Speed was just bad there. I believe that was the Jet that picks that up, yeah. And then he's just like in a position where like D-Knight sure can like do a Stomping Tantrum and put out damage, but I don't know, dude. Like he, he couldn't play his Trick Room mode and I think that kind of really just like hurt him. You see that damage coming out there? Yeah, it was rough, dude. It was rough. And then eventually he does go on to just win this. Can we skip to the end here? Gets the critical hit on that. Bang, bang. He goes down because Homeboy could not click his... um. Yeah, he couldn't click his E-Speed. Obviously, he was banded, locked in. And then, dude, look at the Moon Blast. Specs Fluttermane is actually insane. He does make a really interesting call there. Going the Wild Charge. But, dude, this was such a bulky Urshifu. He holds on. And then, yeah, from there, it's just it's just GG, right? And you're just, like, in this weird position where, like, the Dark Shifu short can do something. The Surging Strikes that slot. That goes down. And the Dark Urshi in a 2-on-1 against Pow and, like, Water Urshi. It's, it's just never going in the favor of the Dark Urshi there. So, GG, Simone, like, he played this one, like, fantastically. If you guys, again, if you want to watch, like, a really, really well-played set, go back and watch this in full. I feel like I'm not doing it justice just skimming through it. But, yeah, absolutely fantastic set there. All right, so, round five, Emilio Forbes versus Kentaro. Now, Emilio Forbes is another guy running a team I absolutely loved. You know, I, I mentioned it earlier when we were looking at... um. Oh, why am I blanking? Round two, Ashton Cox's team. When we're looking at Ashton Cox's team, I was saying I just love the hyper offense and seeing Chiyu Sun once again, dude. It makes me happy, man. And honestly, Bramble Gas is like such a cool tech late game that it's like I'm watching this and I'm like, dude, that that's freaking wild. Like I love it. Fantastic into the 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 fish. The fish can't heat wave it. Really good into the water urshies as well because you resist the the um the surging strikes and you're immune to the close combat. Obviously, you can eat the bleak wind storms. It was like such a like cool team on paper. But off memory, was it this one here? I don't want to spoil anything for like previous, uh, for future games. Um, I believe he actually was going up against like the one guy running air slash, I think off memory. Uh, I, I hope I'm not thinking of the second set here. Was this the, was this the Rocky helmet? I think I want to say this was the Rocky helmet. Um, blood of main. Maybe I'm going crazy here. Gets into like a really nice board state here where he's just like free to double attack. I think this was a really good read and air slashed on the Chiyu slot here, which was like kind of cool. Do you see this here? I'm pretty sure he air slashes him here, right? Oh no, he scary faces the Flutter main. That's right. Flutter main just like doesn't care. 
Maybe I'm thinking about a different set with Emilio Forbes. Maybe this, I'm thinking about his day two set here. Yeah, because it looks like he it looks like he's in a really good position here. He's got the, the attack boost coming out. He gets the power whip off here. Yeah, I think Emilio goes on to win this one, does he? Dude, why am I blanking so hard on this set? Oh, yeah. oh no, that's right. Yeah, so he gave him the attack boost to get the chip damage onto the flood main, which I actually thought was like super interesting. Because uh, the Dazzling Gleam comes out, gets the KO there. But now I think the Dark Urge is in a position where he can actually just like sucker and win. Trying to put him in a really weird end game here. I think he I think he still wins this on Amelia, right? I, I think I want to say, oh dude, that's right. Yeah, look at the Flutter Main living on 4 HP. That was massive. Because then I think he gets the power whip off on the Flutter Main to one-shot it in return, right? Yeah, plus two. Like, yeah, Flutter Main's down. And then yeah, puts him in an endgame. Now, this endgame was actually. I, I remember this set now. This endgame was really, really interesting. So um. I believe we knew the Chi Yu was faster. And he, Emilio actually loses this game. That's right. So the reason Emilio loses this, I kind of actually want to touch on this. Now, now I remember. Um, Emilio loses this game because he sucker punches the Bramble Gas. And I believe he misses the Heat Wave off memory. We'll, we'll run this out real quick. Um, I think it's going to be fine running this out. I don't have any audio on. But basically, let me quickly skip forward a little bit. So he goes the Heat Wave and then misses, right? On the next turn, yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah, there it is. So you see this, yeah? He gets the Sucker Punch out here, which again, I thought was really interesting because like, I think he should always just Strength Sap there. Like maybe Strength Sap isn't like the best, but it stops the Sucker Punch KOing. It, it all cut, like came down to like, did he think Chiyu could survive a Sucker Punch? Unfortunately, he misses the Heat Wave there, which like really sucked. Um, and then, yeah, he gets in this position where obviously CC just cleans it up. So that, that was really unfortunate there as well. Like that was like a really cool team. And I think his end game was like not bad. And like, had he hit the Heat Wave, he could have won. He, he, I think Emilio was Life Orb off memory, so the Life Orb chip may have put him in range of Sucker Punch. Obviously, he resists it. It's not a crit, but it was, um, you know, an Urshifu, a Terra Dark Urshifu there. Um, but then getting into game two, so I believe off memory, I, I'm pretty sure this was the Helmet Flutter main. Am I crazy? Like, why, why do I keep thinking this was a Helmet Flutter main? Because I, I kept remembering, like, I felt like he didn't want to attack it. Um, but yeah, basically this game, he kind of just gets like completely outplayed, like absolutely dominated. The Flutter main put in way too much work. The Terra Steel is interesting, but obviously, you know, when you're in the face of the, uh, the big bad bear, it, it, there's just, there's no hope. Also, look how much damage that Dazzling Gleam did, by the way. It's like 80, 90 damage. Kind of crazy. Uh, actually, no, I'm wrong. That was the close combat that did much damage. But yeah. GG. It was very unfortunate. Kintaro played that game like phenomenally. Like that whole set was like great. But Emilio's team to me was so cool. Like I was rooting for Emilio there. I wanted him to win. The team was sick. Uh, just yeah, bad luck there, unfortunately. Now, heading into round six, we had probably the most unique team of the day. Patrick here. Patrick Donegan is another big Articuno fan, which is great. I'm personally, I love Articuno. I, look, I wouldn't really use it competitively because whenever I use it, I don't dodge anything. But my goodness, did Patrick show off the power of Bright Powder Snowcloak in this set. This was absolutely fantastic. A fantastic watch. I loved it. Um, it was, it was, yeah, it was unbelievably great. Um, obviously, going up against G Giovanni Costa here, one of the best players in the world. Fantastic set here. This was a win and in, by the way. I believe both men were sitting at four. I think they were four and two. They might have been five and one. Um, I, I don't know if I can check. It's it, probably five and one here. Um, because I, ah oh, no, I believe once a player won five games, they were kind of just like basically like done for the day. So, really, really cool set here. I think um he played like game like Patrick played game one here like really really well. But kind of what I want to get into here is I'm gonna like skip forward a bit because this this game uh, this series does go three games off memory. Um. So he has like a really, really cool set here too. By the way, I think this was, was this where it happened? This this here is a really cool uh, play as well. So he's actually Leaf Storm Eject Pack, which is like really cool for like getting a free switch. Uh, basically meaning he can just get, you know, the, the snow up later. Um, and then you basically just see Big Articuno come in here, right? The Drain Punch goes there. Um, I believe he gets a, was this where he got the freeze on the, the Iron Hands? I think he gets the freeze on... No, he doesn't get the freeze on hands here. He eventually, like, freezes the iron hands at some point. But the crazy thing is, dude, the Articuno just did not want to die. Like, he literally just sits there. Like, he... he dude, look... By the way, look at that. That is a dark Urshifu doing 80 damage. Like, obviously, it's it's because he's snow boosted there. Absolutely insane. Um, Eats the wild charge too. Dude, like, how do you eat a super effective wild charge plus a crit from a Urshifu and still be alive? Absolutely insane. But then the crazy thing is here, right? We see the, the 9 HP here. You know, everyone sees 9 HP, right? You think, ah, oh, well, you know, this one's looking kind of rough. Um, 
obviously, you know, look, locking yourself into e-speed here when there's a draft in the back doesn't feel amazing. You know, Dazzling Gleam is like super, super free here. It kind of just like KOs both your mons. It's, yeah, it, it look, it's not looking pretty here. That is for sure, right? I think we can all agree, right? Then you see this. He makes the play going into the giraffe here. Um, and we do see the Terra Flying D Knight come out. What does he click? Does he? Yeah, I was going to say. The Moon Blast comes out. Articuno misses. 9 HP, by the way. Then the Terra Blast Flying goes into the giraffe. Almost one shots it. And then Articuno says, come here. You come with me. Obviously, multi scale D Knight gets frozen there, by the way. Very unlucky. And then. Uh, we're in a situation now, obviously, where it is uh, the the Articuno right now clicking. I believe he clicks Roost there, right? Was that Roost? Yeah, he clicked Roost there. Icy Wind misses again on the Articuno, right? What's that mean? It means the Giraffe goes low, and then the Articuno heals back up to 50% HP, right? And the Giraffe getting the Trick Room off there too, which was huge. Like, Giraffe living on, like, such low HP, on, like, 2 HP, absolutely insane. And now it's in an endgame where it's like, okay, now, now it's GG, right? Now it's GG. You know, we're under Trick Room. He can't really E-speed us. He's frozen. We get the snow back up. D-Knight goes down to that. Like, it crit, but it didn't matter, I don't think, at that point. Uh, based off the multi-scale damage, I'm pretty sure that was going to KO anyway. See the uh, the Moonblast coming out into the Articuno. Nope. He dodged three consecutive attacks to win the game, which to me is crazy because the last time I ran Articuno, I played six games with Articuno, I think, and did not get a single dodge under snow which was kind of wild. And I led it like every single game. So yeah, really cool game one there. Game two. Now I do believe Giovanni actually gets the win here. Um, I want to quickly just like get to the end game of this one. Because um, I do feel like I'm going a bit more in depth than I was originally planning to go with this. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Giovanni does end up winning the end game here. This was also like crazy too. So he also gets like a good chunk of misses here as well, I think. Because um, I'm pretty sure the D Knight missed its attack here. Um, I'm pretty sure the Iron Hands like missed an attack before. I'm not going to go back through it all. Yeah, so he misses the Outrage there. Blizzard picks up. And then, you know, fortunately enough for uh, the Iron Hands here, I do believe he goes on to get the KO. Forcing game three. So th this is like weird, right? Because I do think Giovanni's like playing really well. But like when you're just like missing attacks, it feels bad, dude. And it's not like he's missing Rock Slides anyway, yeah? So he leads that. He gets into the Hands. Which again, I kind of wish he went back to leading his Giraffe. Um, I do think Fairy Giraffe was like pretty decent here. At least for just getting up Trick Room. Sacks off his Iron Hands. Obviously, gets off a nice Blizzard. Big Bad Tinglu comes in here, though. I think Tinglu definitely pulled its weight this game. Um, it was Terra Poison here. He does click it. Um, and look, Terra Tinglu next to Articuno is actually, like, really cool, right? Because he can get the free, you know, EQs off, which is, like, really nice. Plot of Main protects itself. They both protect. Um, but we want to get to the end game again. Basically, we just want to see, uh, like, R and Jesus, like, just solo, like, win this game. Um, really big damage too. Seeing like a uh, Ting Lu take so much damage is kind of crazy. If you have a look at his HP here, if I like stop being an asshole, picks up that KO there too, which is really nice. Um, come on, Ting Lu, show me your HP, buddy. He he's like a hundred HP or something. Yeah, hundred and fifteen. So the Shadow Ball plus Wicked Blow actually would two shot him there, which is like kind of nutty. And then look, we're into an end game again where now it feels kind of bad, right? Iron Hands is Terra Dark. Uh, sorry, Terra Fire, which means like you don't really want to Terra in front of the big bad Ting. Um, you know, we're going to see the Terra Fire come out here. It is what it is. Tinglu protects itself. The Hyper Voice comes out. Artic Wait, let, let me go back. So there it is. Articuno dodges the Hyper Voice here, right? So, you know, pretty crazy. Um, you know, you love to see it as the Articuno player. You just avoid that. Oh, and then what does Iron Hands do? Wild Charge. Uh, wrong one, dude. Should I end the Articuno? Then we keep going forward. A little further forward here. I believe Articuno goes on to... Uh, li what, did he... Live on 9 HP. Yeah, so he goes for the Sheer Cold, which was, like, kind of crazy here. Goes the Psy Shock. I do believe a double actually does pick up Ting Lu here off memory. Yeah, because I think he, he stole it out. That, that's why he protected last turn, so he could get the um he could get the Snow back up. So, like, Snow snow drops out here, and then he comes back in, resets it. Um, And then really cool endgame here. He goes for the Blizzard. The Blizzard, I believe, does not KO. Uh, but then Articuno once again dodges another Hyper Voice. Gets the Blizzard KOing the Farigaraf. The Wild Charge comes out, leaving it on 66 HP. Then we were kind of just in an end game at this point where it's just GG now. Those two Hyper Voice misses were crucial. I believe one Hyper Voice should have picked up a KO with that Wild Charge damage. Unfortunately, it is not. Dodging two Hyper Voices once again, getting him to a victory. So very, very cool. Actually, that's the other thing too I didn't kind of touch on here, right? Was the, the Roost play. I think he dodged on the Roost, right? 
So he like roosts himself back up. Um, am I at the wrong roost here? No, so that's the right roost. Oh, that's right. He drains punch the other side. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was GG there. But look, really, really cool team by Giovanni. Uh, by Giovanni. By, um, by Patrick here. It like unreal to see the Articuno put in so much work. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, look, it, you do hate to see all those misses. Because again, I'm pretty sure like if one Hyper Voice hits in game three, uh, I think Giovanni probably wins that set. I, I don't know how well it takes the Hyper Voice, but a stab Hyper Voice, like it, it all comes down to his investment. Like it's still doing a lot of damage to that Articuno. But yeah, really cool to see Patrick win there. Articuno is one of my favorites. He said it's one of his favorites. And he also mentioned that it was probably going to be his last um, last time ever playing, you know, like a, a VGC circuit. So it was really cool to see him, you know, make day two with uh, an Articuno, which he did say is his favorite Pokemon. All right, guys. And then finally, we have Wolf Glick versus, um, I believe this is Tang Xing. Yeah, Shi Ling Tang. Sorry, I said it in the wrong order. Unfortunately, they actually didn't show off the um, the teams here um, in the preview. So I will actually just like skip forward just to briefly touch on the teams. Um, so we'll go to here. So unfortunately, for those who don't know, Wolf Glick does go on to lose this set. Now, I do actually plan on doing a replay review on this entire series, uh, on this entire set, because look, Wolf kind of wins game one based off of a, a really huge flinch. I'm, I'm not going to go far into this one, guys, just because I again, I do want to do a replay uh, review after Worlds. Um, probably in a couple of days, I'll, I'll do a full breakdown of this. You know, we'll go through each of the turns and where I think potentially, you know, things went bad. Obviously, these two players, um, it's their winning in. If you win, you're in. If you lose, um, you're eliminated from Worlds, right? So this is an absolute must-win set from these two. We see Wolf here bringing not a single home Mon. Very, very interesting. He's got the Flutter Fish, the Hands, the Shroom. Uh, obviously, just a fantastic core of four there. Then he went the Giraffe. I believe he said this was also Sap Sipper Giraffe. Uh, which is really, really interesting. Uh, and then finally, rounded that Giarados, the, the Wolf Glick uh, classic. And then Shieling, uh, Shieling Tang here was rocking a, you know, just a really good hyper-offensive team. Something that your boy here would run, you know. Um, and look, this was a really good set. Wolf kind of wins game one. Um, basically, there was a crucial flinch um, that he gets that wins him game one. Game two um, was pretty rough. I feel like she, um, I'm just going to say Tang. I Sorry, I'm not good with the Chinese. Um, Tang, Tang, like, kind of out, like, outplayed him here in a sense. Like, Wolf was, like, really, really close to winning the end game here for game two. Um, basically, he just got to a point where, like, he was hit by Bleak Wind Storm. I believe he was stomping Tantrum there, right? I think that was stomping Tantrum that finished. Yeah. yeah. He, he was, like, one turn away from winning this. Like, basically, he just, like, kind of just didn't stall out the Tailwind there. You saw, like, the Tailwind, like, pewters out there. He, he was, like, really close to, like, putting himself in a position... I think maybe going the double protect on the, the the fish there was his best play. I think he had to double protect. If he gets it, then he can like go fake out attack into the Lando and potentially win the set there. Um, Wolf was running Terra Water Nasty Plot as well, which was really cool to see. Um, very bulky. It's it's what won in game one. Unfortunately, you know he couldn't get through in game two. Um, and then game three. Unfortunately, I think Wolf did make one massive choke. I wanna I wanna show the turn he chokes. Um, not, I don't wanna say it's a choke. It's a misplay um it's before this it's the is it this turn here yeah it's, it's this turn here i think right so we're gonna see here wolf no nah, it's it has to be the turn it's when the urshifu was on the board yeah i, me I remember it was when the urshifu was on the board because i actually want to i want to see this um for my myself too because i was talking to one of the boys about this okay so here it is here this is where he makes the misplay right so wolf doesn't know the last one he has in the back right and that is why I think this was completely unnecessary. And I think this is what cost Wolf the game, right? So Wolf doesn't know what he has in the back. He predicts the Lando swapping out. Because I think the Lando was minus one, maybe minus two at this stage, right? He swaps in the Arcanine. What does Wolf do this turn, guys? I, I didn't show you what he clicked, I don't think. He fakes out the left slot. Which I think was the right play. I think faking out left was always the right play there. Right, gets the stomping tantrum off. That's whatever you know. He lives it. Wolf click thunder wave the landerous T. Now, I did the calc on this. Wolf w would have definitely two shot the the Lando in this game. But the other important thing here, and this is where I think Wolf really choked it. Right, if you have a look, it's four on three. Right, Tailwind has been used at this stage. Right, all Wolf has to do to win this game is stall out the Tailwind in game three, and he wins this game. I'm almost certain had he chipped the Landorus there, he would have won the game. Because even if the play was what he predicted and they swapped out the Landorus, now, obviously, Wolf didn't know Arcanine was in the back, right? That's whatever. I think you, if you're playing Flutterfish, you should probably know Arcanine's coming, right? I think Arcanine's really good into Flutterfish. But he didn't know the Arcanine was in the back. But any chip 
on the Landorus there meant that the Landorus's game was done. At that point, the Landorus could never take a hit from the Chiyu or the um the Chiyu or the Fluttermane. And that's why basically Wolf, in my opinion, goes on to lose this game. He he does kind of like misplay the end game here. Um, you know, Rock Slide was like a bit of a bitch for him. But like, dude, look, you eventually see how much damage he does on a waterfall, I think, at some point, right? No, I don't think we even actually get to see it. Also, this was like a big choke by Wolf as well. Like, this is where I like I go back to like talking about chip damage, right? So Wolf loses this because he he goes protect. Ah, I realized I just said I wasn't gonna go into this, but I'm going into this. Wolf clicks protect on the Flutter Man and gets one shot by the Terra Dark. Um, Wicked Blow here. The reason Wolf went for that is because like he was, I guess, afraid of like a sucker punch plus a rock slide picking him up and then putting him in a position where Chiyu can't win the 2v1. But again, this is where I go back to like all he had to do was like chip the Landorus and I think Wolf wins this game. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. Unfortunately, Wolf Click loses it. I'm not going to show it on, on video because I do want to, um, as I said, I want to do a replay review on this. Um, is there, yeah, let's let's go sit at like the, the outro screen here. No, that's Wolf Click, All right. But yeah, guys, that was the breakdown. Um, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, really good players didn't make day two. Wolf Click, obviously, one of them. Uh, the guy I was rooting for the most, Judy, well, I shouldn't say the most, but Judy Azarelli did not make it. Uh, Judy's one of my favorite players. My two friends who both participated as well did not make it. Luke and John, shout out to you guys. Unfortunate. Um, I'm sure you guys will do better next season. But yeah, a lot of really good players didn't make day two. Um, but a lot of, you know, other players did. You know, um, shout out to Neil. Neil made day two. Um, super happy for him. I've been watching Neil since, you know, he was... Uh, a much smaller YouTube channel. So seeing him out there, you know, it's great. He's an you know, inspiration to all of us. So seeing him up there is great. Uh, you know, my rival, uh, Joe UX9, he um, he did make day two as well. Oh, sorry. He obviously auto qualified for day two. But seeing him there is cool. Uh, Calvin Foster, you know, Joe and Calvin are the two guys who basically ended my season at OCIC. So to see them both in day two does make me feel a little bit better knowing that I lost to some great players. But anyway, guys, I've been rambling on for far too long. Um, that's day one. I will plan on doing day two as well. Uh, hopefully be up sometime tomorrow. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought down below. Um, obviously, if there's anything you think I could improve on as well with this, because I kind of just like rambled on about the games. Um, I probably should have done a bit better research before I uh, went into this. But yeah, anyway, that's that, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.